Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The title for today's message is What Comes Out of a Person. Key verse comes from verse 20. May we read this verse together? Let's go. Yeah. Even when what comes out of a person is what he has Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Thank you for blessing us to have a worship service today. Father, you may speak to us personally. And your glory may present us. I thank you. Um, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's message is the continuation of last Sunday message. Last Sunday message started with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law criticizing Jesus' disciples. When Jesus' disciples ate food with their unclean hands, they claimed that since you did not wash your hands, and eat the food, you become, you became defiled people. Human tradition, elders' tradition is they have to wash their hands, they have to wash pots and many other things. And Jesus pointed out, you honor human traditions rather than the commands of God. In today's passage, Jesus concluded his teaching about what defiles men regarding food, declaring all foods are clean. It is a revolutionary statement because Jewish people thought what goes into their heart, whether clean food or unclean food, makes them clean or defiled. And Jesus says, no, that's not the case. So today, we would like to know what kind of revolutionary statement Jesus made and how it applies in our own situation. My message has three parts. Part two, listen to me and understand this. This is basically a topic sentence. Part two, that enters the person from the outside. This is what is coming outside a person. Part three, what comes out of a person from in. That's very simple structure. So part one, listen to me and understand me. Let's read verses 14 and 15 all together. Let's go. Again, he just called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. For it is from within, the evil that is coming out of a person. Then he says, Jesus called the crowd to him, and I think uh, crowd, in, crowd includes the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And he said, listen to me, everyone. He called the attention of everyone individually and understand this. He really wanted them to listen to him and understand this. Let's read verse 15 all together one more time. Let's go. Nothing outside of your system can find him or in Rather, it is what comes out of a person that lies there. Very simple. What comes outside doesn't matter. What comes inside matters. So let's go see a little bit more in detail. Part two, that enters a person from the outside. Let's read the response of the article first. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so long? He asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile him? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach, and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. So this is something about what goes into man, basically food. And after Jesus left the crowd, Jesus' disciples came to him and asked about this parable. This reminds me of what Jesus' disciples did about the kingdom of God, parable about the kingdom of God. And Jesus said in verse 18, Are you so dull? Don't you see that nothing enters the person from the outside can they follow? So Jesus expected them to understand this. Verse 19, let's read verse 19 together. Let's go. For it doesn't go into the heart, but into the stomach, and then out of the body. He 
In saying this, Jesus is the heir of all that was clean. If you look at the Old Testament, Moses law, there are clean food and unclean food, clean animals and unclean animals. For example, if you eat the pork, pig is classified unclean food, you are defiled. You become unclean people. So Jewish people believe by what kind of food they eat, their defilement or purity is determined. And Jesus said, all foods clean. So Jesus was basically upside down the whole Jewish religious system. Jewish people, according to Moses' law, uses the water, blood, and the food, and all kinds of things to teach what is clean and what is unclean or defiled. God had a specific purpose. Why did God set up this institution and system for Jewish people? It was to teach them there is a something clean and unclean. Ultimately, he wanted to is there is a system to teach them the clean and unclean in the heart of man. Part 3, what comes out of a person, verses 20-23. Let's read responsibly out of first. He went on, what comes out of a person is what defies them. Other three greed, malice, deceit, goodness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and the body of a person. So this is what comes out of a person. What comes out of a person is what comes out of man's heart. From man's heart, evil thoughts comes. And there are 12 specific manifestations of evil thoughts. Verse 23, Jesus said, All these evil come from inside and defile a person. Do you know all the differences of these 12 evil thoughts? I don't. I don't, I don't even remember all of these evil thoughts. But it's easy to recognize these are all evil thoughts. Sexual immorality, adultery, lewdness, all related to some sexual sins. God commanded, do not commit adultery. Theft may be related to the command, do not steal. Murder, do not murder. Greed may be related to the 10th commandment, do not commit your neighbor's wife, their donkeys and horses. Malice, deceit, envy, do not envy what belongs to your neighbor. Slander, do not give false testimony against your neighbor. <coughs> Arrogance may be against the first commandment, do not put any God before me and for the operations. Now when you look at these four specific manifestations of evil thoughts and evil thought, we know there is a head. There is one head of octopus, there are twelve legs. What is the head? Huh? Sin. These are... <laughs> Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Answer is sin. These, these 12 evil thoughts and sinful thoughts and the head of all these thoughts is the sin. When it comes to sin, why is sin so terrible? What does sin do against us? Why is sin so terrible? What does sin do? Separation from God. Helen, thank you. That's correct. Anyone else? 
Separation from neighbor, that's true too. Huh? Mission of faith. Don't speak up, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to make a mistake. We are forgiven, huh? Leading to death. That's they correct. Yes. Us. Huh? They defile us. They defile us. That's correct too. These are all correct answers, by the way. But I'm looking for one specific answer. That's, that's all. <laughs> I know it's, it's not easy, but. Out of target, missing the mark. Yeah, that's true too. Okay, the answer that I'm looking for is this. Let's read Romans chapter 7, verses 19 and 20 all together. Let's go. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do not what I want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. Do you know when I first read these verses, I was so happy. Do you know why I was so happy? Huh? I'm not the only person. That's true too. But I was so happy. Whoa! I'm not responsible. Sin in me is responsible for my sinning. Praise the Lord. I was so happy. Wow! That's true. So it is not you, but sin living in you that does it. So I am free. I'm perfectly justified. So I was so happy. But my reality of my life does not stay this way. The reality of my life is something different. When I sin, for example, if I commit a sexual, the sin of sexual immorality, no one twisted my hand and forced me to commit sin. There's no people. There's no, no one who is responsible for me to commit sin. So when I commit sin, it is I who do it. So what does sin in me against me? What does sin in me against me? Huh? Someone said something. Okay. Let me remind you one of my example. I shared this example. One day I was in the dining room of my house. And suddenly out of blue, my wife told me, Mr. John, why are you eating so many candies? <laughs> I didn't have any thought. And I woke up and I looked at what is in front of my table? That was about 10 the <laughs> remains of a candy, 10 pills. Now, it is my own hand, pick up the candy, open it, put it in the mouth, and I chew and I swallow 10 times. But I was not completely aware of it. It was so strange experience. I went to the website and looked for an answer. <laughs> because it was a mysterious experience. I was so shocked actually. How can I do something, but I, I'm not completely out of it, not aware of it? The answer I found is this though. This is how your body deceives you. Your body deceives you saying, if you eat something without being aware of eating, you do not gain weight. <laughs> That's the message our body wants to deliver. So, the bad thing about sin is deception. Who wants to sin? Nobody wants to sin. But when we sin, that's what we want. 
We sin because we want. True. Even when a person commits to suicide at that moment, that's the what he wanted, that's why he killed himself. Sorry for bad example. The sinning is all bad example. So I cannot say I'm not responsible because when I sin, it is I who sin. What does it do? Deceiving, deception. So bad thing about sin is sin deceives us and makes us do what we hate to do, what we do not want to do. You know, yesterday morning I was so surprised. There is one prayer topic that I've been praying for about half a year. I really wanted to have an answer from God for this prayer topic, so I prayed about half a year. Almost every day. Yesterday I sat down in the morning to pray, and suddenly I realized my prayer topic is exactly opposite of what I want. I was so sure for half a year, this is what I really want, so I even prayed to God for half a year, but I realized that's exactly opposite of what I want. Does anyone have such an experience? This is my first experience, so I was shocked and did anyone experience about this? You have, you are so sure about something that you wanted to have it, so you pray for even half a year to God, but one day you realize that's exactly opposite of what you really want. Have anyone experienced it? Tell me. Yeah. You do? Yeah. Okay. Well, there is at least one person who says a common with me. But it was my first experience. Yesterday was my first experience. And I thought about why is it? What caused me to be confused about this? What caused me to think opposite of what I want as what I want? And I got one clue. But I want you to guess. Anyone who hit the answer for this will be served by me for dinner. <laughs> because this question is challenging. What do you think caused me? What thing? Okay, Sangyang. Uh, sin was deceiving. Or you were deceived by sin? Sin is deceiving me. Sin is, you know, yeah, <laughs> sin deception. But that's not the answer. <laughs> Good try God knows me better than I know myself. That's the right answer, but not the exact answer I was looking for. <laughs> I realized something else. Dinner is for you. Try it. Last week you said the heart is deceptive of all things. Yeah, the heart is deceptive of all things. That's true. Okay, I, I think I will share with you. Fear. 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 F-E-A-R. Fear. And then I was reminded of Hebrew chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. May we read these verses together. Let's go. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in the humanity. So that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, as well, 
and free those who sorrow all of their lives and help them in slavery and fear. To human beings who have flesh and blood, the greatest fear is fear of death. To a human being who has flesh and blood, there is no greater fear than the fear of death. Jesus became flesh and blood. Jesus became a human being to deliver us from the devil who makes us slaves by the fear of death. Jesus understands our fear because He became flesh and blood, human being like you and me. So He knows we all have become slaves of devil by the fear, by our fear of death, and Jesus came to free us from the fear of death. If Jesus free us from the fear of death, we can be free from all other fears, fear of failure, fear of future insecurity, all kinds of fears. So that is why Jesus became flesh and blood and was crucified to deliver us from the greatest fear, fear of death, and all the other small fears. And that fear deceived me and confused me. What I wanted was exactly the opposite of what I truly wanted. What a shocking and surprising You know, and I look at this passage to prepare for a Sunday message. I thought I made a mistake because I made a division. And I thought, well, I made a mistake because this should belong to the last Sunday message. But I think I already made a mistake. If I made a mistake, so I just walk on it. And when I, the reason I felt this way is, First of all, today's message is related to the last Sunday message, conclusion of Jesus' disciples eating food with their unwashed hands, right here, the Father. But also, the passage itself is too depressing. <laughs> Unbalanced. It talk about all this evil comes from our thought. This is universal truth for all human beings, whether unbelievers or Christians. This is universal truth for all human beings, including you and me, including those people who are born again, who are saved by the blood of Christ. This is what their hearts work. Very depressing. And I felt it's very unbalanced. What, what could, is there anything good? <laughs> is it all bad? Is there anything good? I want to have a, some kind of balance, anything good. So I thought that uh, I made a mistake in choosing this part alone because this is very unbalanced, only too depressing, too one-sided. So, I'm going to talk about good news, balancing part, so that you may not be depressed after Sunday or something. <laughs> Let's read Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 through 27. 
responsibly are go first. Our spring clean, our spring cold, clean water of new, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a heart and put in And I'll put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my law. I'll give you a new heart. God did not try to fix our old heart. He crucified it together with Christ and He created and gave us a brand new heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, if you try to repair all the broken house, no matter how much you repair, it's still not new. <laughs> Something is not right or weak will be broken soon. But new house, totally brand new new house is totally different story. God did not try to fix our broken, corrupted heart, but He crucified it on the cross, and He created a new heart, and He gave it to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Heart of flesh, it's not a heart of a stone. Heart of a stone does not respond to the Word of God. Heart of flesh responds to the Word of God. In verse 27, and I will put my spirit in you. This new heart invites the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in this new heart. And move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. And I read the verse 27, I was so happy. You know why I was so happy? And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Why do you think I was so happy in reading verse 27? Not your responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> you got the answer. Here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was so happy because it says, I will move you to follow my decrees. I will move you to follow my decrees. Wow, it's automatic. I don't need to be responsible. I don't need to do anything. God will move me to follow his decrees. Praise the Lord. But my reality is different. <laughs> when I apply verse 27 in me, it simply does not work. <coughs> I wish it would. It does not work. What's wrong with me? Let's read Romans chapter 1 verses, chapter 8 verses 1 through 4 responsibly. Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because Christ Jesus of all the Spirit and the desire has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemns him in the flesh. These verses said there is no condemnation because Christ was already condemned in our place. It also shows the law was powerless to save us and God saved us by Offering Jesus as a sin offering. When God offered Jesus as our sin offering, what happened? 
and verse 4. Let's read verse 4 all together. One more time. Let's go. In order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, but do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. This is perfection. The law has a righteous requirement, and the, all the righteous requirements of the law is completely met in us. 100% fulfilled. Perfect. The righteous, righteous requirements of the law might be fully 100% Don't you like the idea? I like it. But there is a, another sentence there. Yeah? Let's read. Might be fully imagined as common. Let's read this part. Let's read from who? Let's go. Who do not read according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. This is the condition. If you live according to the Spirit, the righteous requirement of the law will be fully met in you. But if you live according to the flesh, the wickedness of all evil will be fully met in you. You have a choice. You need to make a decision, and you are responsible for your decision. Let's read Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 25, all together. Let's go. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do I know the, the difference of all these fruit of the Holy Spirit? I don't. But I know these are all good. <laughs> but those who, verse 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Verse 25, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Do you know what does it mean by? to keep in step with the Spirit. Do you know what it is? Follow. Led by Spirit, followed. It is like this. If Spirit goes one step forward, you go one step forward, together with the Spirit. If Spirit turn left, you also turn left. If your Spirit turn right, you turn right. If Spirit runs, you jog. His spirit walks, you walk. I'm always fascinated by the women walking together. I think all the time when two female, two women walking together, I always see them, they keep in step with one another. I never paid attention to men. Somehow, I always paid attention, not always, but when I pay attention to the staff, I only pay to the women. I don't think any one time I fail to see they keep in step with one another. 
I don't know how they do that. Because I feel like I cannot do it. They perfectly synchronize to each other. See? What comes out of a person, including believers, we have been saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. These are coming out. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, and slander, animals, and What comes out of the spirit? Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do you like A or do you like B? <laughs> You'll be idiot if you like A. <laughs> we all like B. We are not depressing anymore. Jesus did not come to depress us. Jesus came to deliver the good news of great joy. Deliverance from the corruption of our heart to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit who is in us. So what comes out of a man, all bad stuff, what comes out of the Spirit is all good stuff. So what we need to do? We need to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. We need to choose to live according to the Spirit instead of our flesh. We should not be deceived. We should not be deceived by sin. We should not be deceived by fear. You know, for example, how fear works. If, if a person, it could be you and me, when it becomes so fearful that, oh, I don't feel like uh, I'm able to do my homework or school project or my job. And so down and depressed and suddenly have a loss of interest and feel so weak. Because fear comes into our hearts. Then in order to get out of the fear, he does something, but usually one of these bad things. If you keep on doing it, it becomes an addiction. We have all kinds of addictions, gambling, drugs, even food. Today, we learned what did Jesus taught all food clean, the upside down Jewish religion. Basically, in a way, tear apart. Our heart matters. Our heart produces all evil things. Clean food goes in, and our heart produces all bad stuff. Our heart is like a bro broken machinery. Taking, but God created a new heart through the Holy Spirit by leading according to the, by living according to the Spirit, we can have the righteous requirement of the law fully met righteous requirement of the law in our lives. We can praise the Lord. One word that comes out of a person's prayer. I am a thankful Christian Jesus. Thank you for blessing us.